Hi there, how's it going? My name is Michael Zilmer and this is the first video in a series where I'll be looking at how I work with Cubase, Lemur, Viana Ensemble Pro, expression maps and a few other bits and pieces. The first video will be a very quick overview of all of these components and then in following videos we'll break it all down and examine each of the components in a lot more detail. We'll look at how I've set up and organized my template in Cubase, how to use track visibility to keep a massive template manageable, how to use Lima to control virtual instruments, including following track selection and displaying the relevant articulations. And we'll also look at how to use Viana Ensemble Pro or VE Pro to set up a multi-computer rig and host all of your samples outside of your DAW. I'll talk in detail about how I've set all of these things up, but also why I've decided to set them up in the way that I have. And this has a lot to do with workflow efficiency, but also efficient use of computer resources. I should point out that there are many different ways of setting up a successful template, and this approach simply happens to be something that works for me. However, my ultimate goal is to make the composition process as quick and streamlined as possible. So I do hope that you find a few tips in here that will help you do the same. The first thing to point out is that my setup relies very heavily on using an iPad with Lemur on it. What you see at the top right of the screen is a screencast from my iPad. And as I control it, you'll be able to keep an eye on what I'm doing as the buttons will light up like this. Now let's talk about the actual template. As you can see from the name, I'm at Mark 11 or version 11. I started with version one about three years ago and whenever I've had free time between projects, I've come back to my template, I've tweaked it and I've added extra functionality to it. A lot of that time has gone into programming Lima to get it to do exactly what I want. But I'll get back to this at a later stage. For now, let's look at the contents of the template. The first thing to mention is that I strongly prefer having a single track per instrument. The other way to do it is to split out all of the different articulations between different tracks. And this approach has its merits, like for instance, it's very easy to quickly stack samples. However, several different developers have now come up with ways of selecting multiple articulations at uh, the same time. That makes it very easy to stack samples while using only one track. Having only a single track per instrument also keeps things very manageable visually and is very handy when you're dealing with larger orchestrations. So why don't we next quickly scroll through the template and look at what kind of tracks we have in here. It's all the usual suspects really, starting with woodwinds, moving down onto brass, and then percussion. A whole bunch of percussion in fact. Once we manage to scroll our way through them, we get to miscellaneous instruments, harps, pianos, and other odd instruments. After that, we've got ethnic instruments, ethnic strings, ethnic winds, etc. And then we've got strings, and at the very bottom we've got synthesizers plus a few extra tracks for audio inputs. Uh, these are for recording acoustic instruments and also a few tracks for guitar line in. Then next we've got our mix groups. Now these are organized by section and by library, and this is where I do most of my mixing. Moving on, then we've got our final stems where everything gets grouped together, and then a mix bus, the sum of all the different elements. But we're not done yet. Next we've got audio returns, and these are from Vienna Ensemble Pro or VE Pro. As I mentioned, all of the samples are actually hosted outside of Cubase. For each of the MIDI tracks that you saw above, there is a corresponding audio return channel here. Now this might seem slightly unnecessary, but I'll explain why I've set things up like this in a later video. So I'm just quickly going to scroll through all of them because there's a lot of them to the very bottom of the project. And as we can see, we are now at a total of 1,357 tracks. As you can probably imagine, a project this size is very difficult to navigate without some extra help. But what you can do is set up Cubase visibility configurations in combination with project logical editor presets and then use your iPad with Lima to control and trigger those presets. This way you can choose to only display the tracks that you're working on and hide everything else from view. So I'm first going to hit hide empty, which is going to hide all of the empty audio and MIDI tracks. Next I'm going to hide all of the mix groups. And then I'm going to hide all of the audio returns. This clean view is normally what I have in front of me when I'm starting a new project. 
And then as I need to access the various instruments, I'll use the buttons corresponding to the various instrument sections to show those tracks. So let's have an example. How about we pull up a viola section and play some pizzicato samples. Well, first we gotta find the violas. For that I'm going to tap the high strings button on the iPad and that'll show me all the high string instruments in my template. The rest of the tracks stay hidden so I don't need to scroll around looking for the right track. So we have different types of violas available here and for this example I'm going to pick the Spitfire Symphonic Strings. The way I've set things up means that as I activate the track my iPad will then follow that track selection. You can now see that all of the available articulations for this particular instrument are being displayed in Lima. Now all that's left for me to do is to select the pizzicato articulation and I'm good to go. Having everything set up like this is incredibly convenient. I spend very little time finding the right patch and I can tell at a glance which articulations are available. Next, let's talk briefly about VE Pro. MIDI signals from Cubase get picked up by VE Pro instances in the instrument track and sent out to VE Pro running in server mode on two different PCs. That's where all the samples are hosted and played back and then the resulting audio is routed back into Cubase, arrives in the audio return channels, those get grouped into my mix groups, the mix groups are combined to make up the stems and all of those are ultimately summed into a mix bus. There are of course different ways of organizing your signal flow, for example you could already group your instruments before having them return into Cubase. And then there's the question of at which stage do you add processing to your signal. I'll go over the reasons I've chosen to set things up in this particular way in upcoming videos. Meanwhile, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.